I remember telling my parents, and I remember my dad saying, oh yeah, I always wondered why you couldn't spell your own name. And I was like, ugh. I definitely just know that my brain works differently and think that it just allows me to put things together. It just happens magnetically. It's very natural. From the Understood Podcast Network, this is How'd You Get That Job? A podcast that explores the unique and often unexpected career paths of people with learning and thinking differences. My name is Eleni Matteo and I'm a user researcher here at Understood. That means I spend a lot of time thinking about how we find jobs we love that reflect how we learn and who we are. I'll be your host. Krishana Williams is an Icelandic artist based in London and she has dyslexia. She studied at Central St. Martin's College, an art school where she found a lot of others who thought differently like her. She wasn't diagnosed with dyslexia until she was 25 years old. Now she's part of the Dyslexic Design Art Collective and has been running her own studio since 2012. Hello, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Well, I thought a good place to start is your studio. So tell me about the studio. What do you all do there? We're a studio, Christiana S. Williams Studio. At the very heart of it is the fine art and like the creations. There's always like a few collections that I will make personally each year. And then another half of the studio is more commercial projects that are brand related and they also have to work really well together because anybody who's buying the art needs to be happy with the people that I'm working with. So that's like the two main sides of it. And I work in collage, a lot of digital art. So kind of XR as well as the physical 3D pieces, as well as limited edition prints. It's interesting, actually, because we started kind of on the kitchen table. And as you kind of grow, probably one of the hardest bits is to get somebody else in to work with you. So it kind of slowly grew from there, from the kitchen table into a studio, from two people to four people to six. And I think we're about 10 at the moment. Do you want to talk a little bit about your chosen medium and perhaps like how you would describe your work? So my role is an artist creative director. So in the very beginning, I had some, because of the nature of my work, so much of it is about research and working with older Victorian engravings. So you might have to find three older telescopes to be able to make a new instrument or often I would use different scientific material to kind of create buildings and architecture. And as a young person, I used to draw things in a really intense way. And when I was at Central St. Martin's, I did this internship with a woman that had this fashion label and I started drawing patterns for her and she was actually the one that introduced me to silkscreen printing and Victorian engravings. And the Victorian engravings were used a lot in the fashion industry in London because you would just have to create these huge giant clips for a really quick turnaround for the next season, for the next season. I did like three or four seasons with her and that just gave me the idea of working big and working on scale and I was always very interested in kind of animation and the digital side of things. When did you first start doing collage and like drew you to it? What do you like about it? As a kid was just constant drawing, painting and all of it. So it's interesting when I really look back, I can see that the work is, has that like thread in it. Even when I was doing like the liner cutting and stuff and I started screen printing, which I really loved, but I was using the screens as a stamp. And again, like the complete thread in that. So the collage actually came much later. It's just kind of realizing how to work digitally. And that was through the fashion of having to have to create those big fabrics very quickly. So you mentioned you have dyslexia. Is there any link between your attraction to collage and your artistic practice to the way that your brain works and your dyslexia? Being dyslexic in school in Iceland, of course, because I'm in that age group, we had no idea. It was just like what probably every other dyslexic experience is that really frustrating knowing that you can do it, but you still, you can't quite get it out there and some things you're good at. And also like the variation in dyslexia being so vast. So I think definitely my memory was affected in a really specific way where, you know, you remember, but then you just, you can't get to your short term memory quick enough. So I feel like when I finally went to Central St. Martin's, which wasn't until I was 25 at Central St. Martin's, they just immediately went, right, for you to get you tested. 
And I was like, oh, and I didn't think much about it because you do learn how to navigate it. And I remember telling my parents and I remember my dad saying, oh, yeah, I always wondered why you couldn't spell your own name. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I was like, been so frustrated. But they just, yeah, I think I definitely just know that my brain works differently. And because of the way that I think that it just allows me to put things together. It just happens magnetically. It's very natural. And you mentioned one of the challenges that you had when you were first working with a team was just being able to communicate yes. what you were thinking over the years and like having a studio and working with a team. Like yes. how have you learned to be able to communicate what's in your brain or externalize what's going on in your head? I think definitely when I look at the beginning, again, I just was just frustrated because there's something was so clear in my head, but I just couldn't communicate it easily. So that was definitely a journey, just a journey that you just by hammering, just doing it gets easier. And just, but if you're around nice enough people <laughs> that understand you and see what you can do, you can just, you just have to have faith in kind of humanity. And I feel like with the girls in my studio now, they know me. They know now what I will remember, what I won't remember. And they know to remind me of certain things. And they know that I'm going to go to the airport without my passport, like for the 30th time. And they're just all kind of floating around and they can work together. And actually, as I'm getting older, I feel like I'm using, like, and I'm just getting more and more better at these things. You kind of talked about when um, your team first came on board, you talked to them about it. Did you mean that you talked to them specifically about having dyslexia and how that might impact your day to day? Or like, what did you mean when you said that? Not in the beginning. I think people definitely just experienced me as this person that would flit around quite a lot. But now as I've got older and like my team were all more established, I feel like in the past four or five years, like I'm just always very vocal about it. I said, I can't really hear when you say these letters out loud that I don't picture them. And like when people are talking to me really fast on the phone, like breaking down something that they're spelling. And I just always make a point of talking about it. I always just also with certain disruption in the studio. And that some of it took me a long time to learn that I could ask for that break. Do you think that there are any ways that your dyslexia influences how you manage your team and manage your studio, like beyond just creating the work itself? I'd like to think so. It makes you have more kind of empathy with so many creative people with neurodiversity. You feel really comfortable around them. Also, like you realize when you look back with your friends that you automatically grow with people that are a little bit similar to you. What would you say that you've learned about yourself or your dyslexia over the years? If you could go back and talk to your 20 or 30 year old self, like what would you say? I think I'd mostly like to speak to my 10 year old self. <laughs> I just kind of give her a pat on the back and just say, you know, <laughs> you're not crazy. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was so confusing. I think when I was in my 20s, I think I just never associated dyslexia with how it affects your memory. Mm. So I still thought that was just me being me. And it was working with some dyslexic art exhibitions with Jim Rockers, uh, my friend that was also in Santa St. Martin's. Um, I completely forgot what I was going to say. The funny thing is that you were talking about memory. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. So, yes. So with my memory is all of my thoughts, they're just like floating on the top of the ocean. And even though I've just heard something, the likelihood that I'll be able to get it are quite slim. And I've just, I think I've lived with fear of just feeling quite stupid. It really makes you doubt yourself. Um, and I think when I got diagnosed with dyslexia, like at 25, 26, because you know how hectic you are just in that time. And I was always this person that was doing a hundred things at the same time. And yes, so I think I didn't actually start to read about that till my 40s. Looking back, I feel like I would have educated myself a bit about the diversity of dyslexia. Does your dyslexia manifest differently across languages? No, it's interesting. Icelandic is quite literal, but it's still quite wordy. So expressing myself in English, I find that really easy. Icelandic is really similar because in Icelandic, it's just, I would still 
the letters is just is is hearing them and just the hesitation with the writing, even though it's just fantastic on computers and spell check and I you know compose things really quickly now. Though I think it's quite similar. I have heard that. Yeah. But I just wondered what that yeah. experience was like for you. Do you want to give us an example of a project that you're working on right now and perhaps a little bit of your artistic process in that? About 20 projects going on at the moment. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So with um, the Victorian Albert Museum is one of my favorite places in the world. And it's such a big contrast with Iceland and growing up there. So it's a bit like going to these old English places that are just like you find they're so curious in that one. So I've been working with them since 2011. when I did this installation in the British galleries where you could sit down in the sofa and I do this really intricate, like jungle-like collages and you could do your own collage. So we had four corners of that. So that was really, really fun. I always really feel very deep that everybody has that creativity inside of them, but we just kind of leave it at the door. And that's why collage is so amazing. But like I've done so many like live collage workshops or those digital ones, and it's just always brilliant and so different what people come up with. And like when I did those four pieces, everybody was like, oh, do you really want to open up your work? Or do you want everybody just to be able to go into your work? And just, I said, nobody wants to do what you do. Everybody wants to do their own thing. So I continue to work with them throughout the years and with about over a decade that's pretty amazing yes and i did the uh they did a huge exhibition about alice in wonderland curious and curiouser and i was commissioned to do the book for that and we did a vr experience within the exhibition so like working digitally and being able to kind of break everything apart and doing the paper theaters was just amazing that's so exciting uh, thank you, Christiana, for joining me from London. Thanks for having me. You've been listening to How'd You Get That Job from the Understood Podcast Network. This show is for you, so we want to make sure you're getting what you need. Email us at thatjob at understood.org with your thoughts about the show. Or maybe you'd like to tell us how you got that job. We'd love to hear from you. If you want to learn more about the topics we covered today, check out the show notes for this episode. We include more resources as well as links to anything we mentioned in the episode. Also, one of our goals at Understood is to help change the workplace so everyone can thrive. Check out what we're up to at u.org slash workplace. That's the letter u.org slash workplace. Understood.org is a resource dedicated to help people who learn and think differently discover their potential and thrive. Learn more at understood.org slash mission. How'd You Get That Job is produced by Margie DeSantis and edited by Mary Mathis. Brianna Berry is our production director. Our theme music was written by Justin D. Wright, who also mixes the show. For the Understood Podcast Network, Laura Key is our editorial director, Scott Kashir is our creative director, and Seth Melknick is our executive producer. And I'm your host, Eleni Mathieu. Thank you for listening. Listening.